Well, hello and welcome to another online Bible study. I'm Pastor Bill Brown with Carmichael Baptist Church. Good to have you with us and we're glad to be able to minister to you. Uh, in this study, we're going to be looking at the Comforter. In this, we're going to use, first of all, John 16 and verse 17, where it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. The Gospel of John is the only gospel. In fact, it's the only uh, letter other than 1 John to use the word, uh, for the Greek word anyway, uh, parakletos, uh, which is translated comforter. John's the only uh, book to use that English word. And of course, it speaks of the Holy Spirit. First um, John translates it the advocate, and that's of course in reference to Christ's ministry. There's a lot of confusion and misunderstanding about the Holy Spirit, and in particular about his ministry and his coming on the day of Pentecost within Christianity. I do not believe that the church was formed during the day of Pentecost, but empowered, as we'll see. I'm certainly not going to try to attempt uh, to correct any misunderstanding or wrong teachings, but simply try to narrow down and, and teach a small portion about the Comforter. I'm only going to tell you about three different things when we begin to look at the Comforter. The first being the authority of the Comforter and then the assistance of the Comforter. Who does he assist? And then his aim. All of these are coming from John chapter 16, but of course going from chapter 14 into chapter 16, you'll learn a great deal um, about the uh, Holy Spirit. In fact, in John chapter 14, Christ is trying to prepare his disciples about his leaving and about the Spirit's coming. And he taught them this because as he taught about his death, burial, and resurrection and not the establishment of the kingdom, the uh, disciples became disturbed or uh, troubled or agitated. Uh, and that's simply because they did not fully understand or his or comprehend that his coming to die or to separate that, that his coming was to die rather than to rule and to reign. Many Christians today are agitated and troubled because they do not understand God's plan for them. In fact, they do not understand God's plan over what they think they ha is the better idea for them in their own mind. Same way that the disciples were looking for the king and a coming kingdom, what was going to happen? They would find that they would enter into a world that would be completely unchanged. But Christ was teaching them that though the world would not be changed, they would be changed. And in fact, they would be empowered. Better than that, they would be better off after he left than while he was with them. Their ministries would grow through suffering. They didn't understand all this. Uh, a lot of times we don't understand much of it. They couldn't imagine themselves being better off with his departure. They couldn't understand that their power would be greater after he departed than while he was with them. But that's exactly what Christ taught. He was with them for three years. And yet listen to what he says in verses 14 and 26 of John. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. 
You see, the comforter would teach those things that Christ taught them. He would bring them to mind. Their memories, though faulty, would be aided by the comforter. That's encouraging. He taught them also that there were things that they were not ready yet to receive, but that they would be brought to a great appreciation and an acceptance of the truth after the Spirit came to them as the Comforter. In John 16, verses 12 through 13, it says, I have many, yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. That ought to be a good lesson for us today. There are times where we can't bear the information. We can't receive the information. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. You know, the apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth, and he told them that I have to speak to you as carnal or as unto spiritual babes. They could not receive the meat of the word, so he fed them the milk of the word. In the book of Hebrews, he wrote those folks that, in fact, Peter referred to them as words hard to be uttered. And he did too, words hard to be uttered. Why? Because they were dull of hearing. Christian, you and I need the comforter. We need to see, hear what Jesus taught his disciples about the authority of the Spirit, the assistance of the Spirit, and the aim of the Holy Spirit. The comforter, this truth, make it practical for yourself. We need to learn something about his ministry. And in those brief points, I'll try to help and guide you through these verses here. And let's begin with the authority. In fact, in those verses that we're looking at, go back to John 14 and 26 again, where it says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, the Holy Spirit is being sent by the Father in Christ's name. Christ came. In fact, if you think that's somehow demeaning, understand that Christ came in the Father's name. He came by the Father's authority. He came by the Father's power and authority. Let me show you in John chapter 5 and verse 43. He says, I am come in my Father's name. Or John 14 and 24, where it says, He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which he heareth not mine, but the Father's which sent me. And it isn't removing the divinity of Christ or lowering him in his position to speak of his having been sent by the Father. This is all about the covenant of redemption, the eternal covenant of redemption, and each partner of the Trinity playing a part in our salvation. The Holy Spirit was sent by the Son. The Son was sent by the Father. That's how they have authority. Again, even though the Spirit is God, he submits to the will of the Father and to the will of the Son. The Spirit would come by the Father's authority in Christ's place. And to do so, he is magnifying the person of Christ. He is teaching those disciples and us what we had need of to learn. In other places, we can learn about the gifts of the Spirit. And we learned that, of course, in the church at Corinth, that they spoke by the Spirit of God. They were given gifts by the Spirit, 1 Corinthians uh, 12 and 11, but all these work of that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. 
Now, the idea is that the Spirit is sovereign in his sending. But understand this, that the Spirit's will is that of the sons, which is that of the fathers. They work in perfect harmony, but in separate offices, having different functions. So his authority, the Spirit's authority, it is because, first of all, he's divine. He is God, the Holy Spirit. But his authority is derived from his being sent by the Son, being sent by the Father. Next, I want to look at the assistance. Let's go back again to chapter 14, verse 26, where it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall do what? There's our assistance. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, in particular, we need to understand that that's really personal to the apostles themselves because we didn't walk with Christ. He didn't teach us, but he did teach them. And that's what the Holy Spirit is bringing those things to mind so that they can also write as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. It's very important that we notice those words, teach you all things, and then qualify that word all. When it says that he would teach them all things, the disciples didn't become omniscient any more than we'll see also that they didn't become omnipotent the Spirit would teach them the things that had previously been mysterious to them. It's the same thing with us. We learn the Word of God, but as we study it, then the Holy Spirit illuminates something to us. He teaches us more. Let me give you a couple of verses about the disciples. First of all, in John chapter 2 and verse 22, where it says, When therefore he was risen from the, descend, from the dead, excuse me, his disciples remembered, that what we just said the Holy Spirit would do, he re, they remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Didn't mean they were just saved, but the Holy Spirit confirmed that gave him that understanding. Look in John chapter 12 and verse 26, where it says, these things understood not his disciples at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him and that they had done these things under him, uh, unto him, excuse me. They understood these things later after his departure and they understood because of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We need to understand that the apostles knew the truth, but the Spirit led them into the truth in a very personal and practical way. Often Christians believe that if they practice the same thing that the apostles practice, or if they say the same things the apostles said, that somehow or another, the outcome will be exactly the same. Again, we need to understand the Holy Spirit's assistance. The problem that many have is the trying to do what they did or to repeat what they did in the book of Acts and again, think that they're going to have the same outcome. A lot of churches will look at, oh, look at that church over there is growing. We got to copy what they're doing. No, you need to listen to what the Holy Spirit is teaching. A lot of Christians miss the real fruit they could have because they have missed the ministry and assistance of the Comforter. And it's the same thing for a church. We have to listen to the Comforter. We have to ask for assistance. We need the assistance of the Comforter to both understand and to empower. Again, a lot of cases, a church may attempt to pattern themselves after the churches in the book of Acts, which is good, but then to expect the same thing to ha happen to them is fallacy. In fact, many today teach that very thing. If you just do this, 
this will happen. The problem is that the activities you get involved in do not guarantee success. What guarantees success is the spirit's empowerment. And because you are acting a certain way also doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit will give you that same amount of fruit that they were able to have. It is the spirit's work that is required and the fruit that he produces will be according to his sovereign will. If this is not understood, and if we do not understand that the Holy Spirit does not make us either omniscient or omnipotent, we really are missing the impact of John's chapter 14, 15, and 16. These facts are transformational. This is why we both preach and pray. The truth preached will affect nothing without the ministry of the Comforter. It is the sovereign wind, the blowing of the Spirit in sovereign power that makes the difference and makes dead men alive. Now that does not mean that we neglect sound words, soft words, serious words, or systematic words. We have to study. We must prepare, but we must pray and depend upon the assistance of the Holy Spirit. Now, lastly, let me talk about the aim of the Comforter. Again, if we want to go back to John chapter 16, this time to read verse 12, he, where again he says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them. All right, remember that you need the assistance to receive the things of Christ. We need to receive the things that Christ would communicate to them and to us. And that happens through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But notice verse 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself. Now we're talking about the aim here. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Now notice verse 14, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. This is the Holy Spirit's ongoing ministry. This is not a one-time trip, one-time experience. We're talking about the comforter's role or aim in all of our services, in all of our teaching, in our walk. The Holy Spirit's aim is to glorify Jesus Christ. That is the ultimate goal. Of course, it also is to teach us, what did he say, the truth? And he's called the spirit of truth. We're talking about the interconnected truth. In that, again, Jesus Christ is the truth. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So when we're talking about him teaching us the truth, Jesus Christ is the sum and substance of the Bible. Everywhere we look, we should find Christ. As we study and as we yield ourselves to the Spirit, we will learn, but we will learn most specifically about Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit then overcomes our lack of understanding and improves our discernment. You know, you go back through the scriptures, understand about the Apostle Paul. Remember, he did not easily receive the instructions that God would not remove his thorn in the flesh. It took him three times in that prayer. And then finally, I believe that the Holy Spirit assisted him to understand. Peter said there were many things that Paul wrote that were hard to be understood. It's the Holy Spirit is going to teach it to us. Paul taught that there is it, it is not just the eye gate or the ear gate through which we learn. In 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 10, he says, But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. It is the Spirit that helps over, well, I shouldn't say he helps. 
It's the spirit who overcomes our ignorance and our inabilities. Oftentimes, again, when we read through the scriptures, we look for something different than what he's showing us. By his authority, through his assistance, his aim is to teach us more about Jesus Christ. The Comforter ministers in us and to us through the scriptures, but he is always pointing us to Christ. It never says that the Spirit teaches us about himself or points us to himself. As a teacher, as a preacher, we cannot make the brightest Christian understand that which only the Holy Spirit can teach. If the Holy Spirit doesn't reveal it, we're at a loss. A.W. Pink spoke of how much we must have both the seen eye and the illuminating truth. Eyes cannot see in darkness, and light reveals nothing to the blind. We need both. The Spirit gives us sight and illuminates Christ to us. That must be the aim of our teaching and our preaching. Again, when we begin to look through the scriptures, even when we look at, for instance, in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 10 or verse 9, excuse me, where it says, For in him, talking about Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, all the perfections. Everything that we can see and learn about God, it's in Jesus Christ. Go down to verse 17 of chapter 1, or back to chapter 1 and verse 17, where it talks about he is before all things, and by him all things consist. In other words, Jesus Christ is preeminent over all. And verse 18, he is head of all. He is the head of the body of the church. And we're talking about the local body of New Testament believers that have gathered together. He is the head of that body who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. And in all things, again, he might have the preeminence. And then verse 19, for it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. What do you want to see? I want to see the fullness. I want to learn. That is what the Holy Spirit teaches. He does not teach about himself. He points us to Christ to see the fullness and the submission of our Savior and how that we can have the fullness and how that we can submit through Christ to Christ. Though the Spirit's work is necessary, we do not point the lost to the Spirit. Though the work of the Spirit is necessary, we do not look to the work of the Spirit. We look to the work of Jesus Christ and pray that the Spirit would apply that work to the lost. Though the Spirit illuminates the Word, we do not point the lost to the Spirit, but to the Word that He illuminates that they might see Christ through the work of the Spirit. Oh, that the Spirit might give us a vision of the Savior. I pray that the Spirit would reveal the doctrine of justification, imputation, and glorification to you, and every bit of that comes through Jesus Christ. The Comforter, the Holy Spirit, has authority, divine authority. He does not assume it because he is God. He was sent of Christ and of the Father, and he assists us by illuminating the revelation through which he gave to those who wrote. Remember, it is the Spirit who moved upon men of old. It is the Spirit who will reveal and illuminate that revelation to us. And as he opens to us Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I pray that he truly would, Christ I'm talking about, might have the preeminence over us and his work in and through and by Jesus Christ at Carmichael Baptist Church. I pray the Lord's blessings upon you, his encouragement to you. 
I pray that you can see his authority, his assistance, and his aim. May God bless you.